ask Natasha this question, and without giving too much away in terms of uh, perhaps the age, I'd like to ask you, Natasha, what it was like being a Philippine women's national team player uh, from before, from your time? Because obviously now you got. I'm without again without. I'm sorry, Natasha, without you know being uh, giving away too much. I can Google your your your, your bio, but without uh, you know because you look at the team now. And of course, it's gonna be there's gonna be disparities be between the men and the women, uh, not just about mileage. And, and Shaki even mentioned about the salaries as well in one of uh, his Instagram stories. But you talk about the women's uh, uh, football team now and the mileage they're getting, and perhaps the facilities and the training camps available to them now. Talk to us about when you were playing and how was it then, and how much of a different is it now that uh, you know the current setup now for the Philippine women's team? First of all, I'm going to say that I'm still young. I retired young. <laughs> <laughs> and second of all, okay, I'll you know, take you guys back through a bit of like the history of women's football and you know just how much we've grown and developed throughout the years. And so I've been playing for the national team since I was in the training pool in 2006, played since 2007 until 2016. So that's my time frame with the national team. And, you know, during the time of, let's say, 20s, after the, the time of Coach Mara, I reached Coach Mara on his last year at around 20, 2007. 2008, 9, 10, 11, we had a different coach every year. So there was no sense of consistency. It was really, you know, um, send the team and like with a coach and all that. But there was no sense of consistency on what is the goal? What, what are we trying to achieve? It was just, you know, you, you have a tournament, we're going to send the women's national team. You have a tournament, we're sending the women's national team. And come along, we go um, to 2012. 2012, we're in the likes of Ernie Nieras, Philbert Alquiroz, and the rest of the gang come in. And the, they also started to this program wherein we were going to do training camps in the U.S. The goal was to be able to identify U.S.-based players and merge them with the team with the local-based players. And that's how we joined the LA Vikings Cup, where we actually won the LA Vikings Cup. And from there, we were able to see the training pool of players, not just for the women's national team, the, the Open, but as well as for the youth development as well. So every year from 2013, I'd say to, I think, 2014, that every year there was, 2012, yeah, from 2012, that there was a camp in the States every year to identify talent, to be able to see all the Pinays playing abroad. Because we know that we are living in the States and are living in the States. I'm sure each of us here, we all have relatives. And anyone watching, for sure you have at least one relative living in the States. <laughs> So we already know how many players we have or we can tap that are playing abroad. And so it started with that. And so when the Asian Cup qualifiers came around, when we went to Bangladesh, it was a, a new team again infused of local players with foreign-based players. And as we said, we weren't able to qualify just by a single point. But it was a fantastic tournament, you know, and beat the likes of Iran, Bangladesh and lost to Thailand by a point. Um, when I guess what happened was, but you know, I'd still say it wasn't enough support. Like yes, they were there, but we knew that that's where we felt that there was a click as well. For people who have from the inside looking out, it's like for people inside, that's when we knew that kaya natin, that the Philippines can go on to a higher level, that we can make it to the World Cup, or that we can make it to the higher stage to the Asian Cup. And I guess we lost our footing, our bearing around 2014 when there was no women's national team tournaments at all. And then around 2015 and 2016, there was no funding for women's national team. I'd say not none, but very poor or at bare minimum. So it was like we were slowly making steps and then we took a seat back. So there was no outside support. There's no more outside funding that was helping us. And it was just... Uh, PFF based and this is which led to the reason also why I retired was because um, we were training back in ultra a place that we haven't used since 2007 and the facilities 
were the same as it was in 2007. And I'd say even worse because, you know, they didn't really take care of the pitch. It was being used by um, the other athletic sports as well. So there'd be holes in the pitch as well. And so it was, I guess, disappointing or in a, a bit heartbreaking from, let's say, from a player's point of view that we were slowly get, you know, progressing and progressing and progressing. And then we take our foot off the gas and sudden breaks. So everything drops again. While our counterparts in Vietnam, in Thailand, were continuously improving and improving. So I think that was really just more of the long road why we, we didn't make it right away. And then you come on to 2000, 2017 where um, the team manager, Jeff Chen, comes along. And with him, of course, was the funding as well needed. You also have the MVP Sports Foundation or, and, and the rest. So there was additional support outside, additional funding added on to what the PFF could provide. And they were also getting more as well from the PFF. And again, it translated as well to results, not only from the Asian Cup qualifiers, because this time around, since there were more teams, and we were also very lucky with the draw, um, we were able to make it to the Asian Cup, which is 2018 in Jordan. So by the time of 2018 in Jordan, this time um, with Coach Raba, who was there, um, they were one slot away from qualifying to the World Cup. Because if there are six slots, if there were five slots, they were the sixth team. So it, you know, it, it, it tells the tale. For, so for anyone who's just new to football, the win didn't happen overnight. It came through years and years of hard work. And so we were slowly creeping our way in. It was just a matter of when. And again, come back to 2019, which I think was such an important year as well for women's football, and as well as with the assignment of Coach Let, who I would say is still, up to this day, the number one female coach in the Philippines. And just the infusion that she had with the team, the connection that she had with them, and the number of tournaments that they had from you know the AFF Women's Championship and the SEA Games that was here in the Philippines. So there was a lot of growth as well with those set of players. And 2019 Games, we saw it in Binyan. It was full. And there was so much support. They were slowly being but Women's football was slowly climbing up the rankings again. And the pandemic happened. So when the pandemic hit, of course, it hit everyone really hard, most especially women's football. They were inactive for over a year. A bit well over, over a year. A year. Yeah. yeah, well over a year until the Asian Cup qualifier. But that's also how you can tell how resilient, uh, we always use this word that um, how resilient the Filipino people are. And, the, and you can see it here again, how fi these Filipino women, the women of football, how resilient they were. That when duty was called and they were called up for the task of making, making it to the Asian Cup qualifiers under Coach Maro, regardless of the fact that a lot of them have been inactive for well over a year, was that they were able to pull through and make sure that we had a slot to the Asian Cup. So again, it also goes to show we have to um, give it to all these coaches that were with us along the way that have helped us to reach where we are. And at the same time, we also know that in this Asian Cup, that Coach Allen was the missing link. Um, I actually just heard the, that, that line from um, Sir Nonong Adaneta in his interview earlier today, was that Coach Allen was the missing link in the puzzle for the women's national team to find the success that they've had. But I also think that not just him, but also the support system that he has. Because usually when we, have, when we go to tournaments, we only send in you know, the staff are like, what, five people? Five, the, six, you just have a coach, like the, yeah. the yeah. coach, the assistant coach, and then medical, one, like, coach, yeah. one medical person, that's it. You know, there's no, there's no space for anything else. But I think slowly along the way, most especially in this Asian Cup, we sent our staff fully equipped. So we gave Coach Allen also the best chance that he could. He brought in staff with him. 
he has his assistant coach yes is the their fitness coach as well as an analyst you have your coach as well from the philippines which is pimp uh patrician pelido who was a player as well about enough. <laughs> we don't talk about we enough we don't talk about enough. we might not yes. even have we might even have to do a whole segment just for her yes but you know <laughs> Just more of that through the years as well when the support came when the funding came and the proper preparations came the time frames and proper preparations and then you can see the results so for anyone that needs a takeaway from this also it's that if you have a good coach proper preparation and funding there are a lot that we can achieve but if you take all that out and just expect the girls to be able to the girls and the coach even to be able to take the girls to the next level, but you're not equipping them with the necessary capabilities and the necessary tools and equipment that they need, then it's not gonna work. And so I think that we have been learning from our mistakes and we and we're very thankful that our funding is there. There's more funding. And at the same time, we have the likes of Jeff Cheng, who is also helping the national team. But you know, shout out to all the other sponsors out there we are very much open <laughs> <laughs> you graciously to continuously help us to get to that next level you heard natasha Absolutely you heard natasha <laughs> yeah but talk about being the, being the missing link see coach allen but you, you really mentioned a lot of notable gentlemen and ladies who helped the team all through these years and two people that uh, you mentioned earlier, of course, Philbert Alclos is your father, and Ernie Nieras. Um, um, I think he, he's he's also the father of one of the former players, as Sam Sam Nieras. So two of two. them, um, Sabrina. Sabrina is uh, the other one. So these people, these gentlemen, um, we have to give credit as well. And to be fair, Coach Alan Stajic of uh, the current uh, coach now, he is very quick and he's very open to give credit to people who came before him. Because obviously, you cannot uh, do and have these at your disposal without the people who laid the groundwork for you. For you. Um, talk about uh, Coach Alan Ceres, because we always say that, um, you know, you may have an all-star team, but if there's no, no not a, a good tactician, a good motivator uh, behind the bench, it's not gonna, it's gonna, not gonna, you know, not gonna work and not gonna, uh, perform well on the field. Talk to us, Eres, about the importance of having Coach Allen there um, for the Philippine women's team. Um, well, I mean, the results uh, speak for themselves. Um, how do I talk about Coach Allen? He, we, we all know that he was the coach of the, the Matildas, the Australian team, for, for five years. And um, he's been to the Asian Cup twice. He's been to the World Cup, to a World Cup. That he seems to have. I I have never met him in person because obviously they went straight to the U.S. I didn't meet him when I was in Australia because you know what the <laughs> what um what are the odds of that? But um, he seems to have understood exactly where the team was when he arrived. He knew what was necessary to equip the girls to to get to where we are now, right? He, he knew it for Australia as well. He developed uh, a lot of their players. Sam Kerr was not in the position she plays in now before, you know, he did that. Of course, you know, all credit to Sam Kerr, obviously, because talent, but, you know, your your talent is honed by a good coach, and this guy, um, Ryan, I got your your. You asked him about the ice cream chant after the match, and um, that's kind. It kind of encapsulates who he is as a person and the coach. I think that this team that just beat a team that they had never beaten before and had qualified for the World Cup was chanting ice cream and because they had the deal with the coach. 
right? <laughs> about getting ice cream and or cake or both, depending on the goal uh, goal line. And I think you know a lot of people may think that's childish or whatever, but wait until you play sports, <laughs> you'll understand. But, that is um, right. Yeah. yeah. But he he's um he is a tactician and at the same time he is a very understanding person is what it looks like from the outside um, looking in. And if you ask almost anybody who has had any um, interaction with him on this team and from Australia where he used to where he used to coach and um, again when you look at um, through the internet, what people are saying about him and his and his assistant coach, he's a good dude. Like everybody would would, <laughs> I think a lot of the Australians want him back, but uh, nah, maybe not, guys, maybe not. But um, yeah, and can I just say something about what um, Natasha was saying earlier? Um, a lot of people overlook that this team isn't built. Um, wasn't built right uh, at the the camp in November. Um, is it Flanagan and uh, Frills? Carly, yeah, I, yeah, Frills. It depends on where you you know how you read your name. Um, were from the youth team from the youth teams, so they were coached by Marielle before, like under fourteen, with uh, I think with Joyce uh, Natasha. I'm not sure. But yeah. and then now they're in the senior team. And then of course you still have um Ina on the team and Cam Rodriguez and the Castaneda sisters. I mean Sarah took that took that penalty and um one of my um cousins, I'll talk about her a little bit, used to play for the women's national team. And she messaged, you know, she has two daughters now. She's based in uh, New York and she was watch watching the matches. And she said, you know what? Um, I'll have to ask Mrs. Castaneda about what she did, <laughs> how she did it, that the girls um, uh, continued playing and, you know, how, how she motivated the girls to play and all of that. Because she saw the Castaneda sisters grow up. A lot of a lot of the of the girls in PWFA actually, you know, Natasha included, saw them basically um, um, grow up. And so yeah, this isn't just like um, people that uh, these aren't just girls that they pulled from anywhere. Um, even the McDaniel sisters have been around for a long time, you know. And I think that when people say, oh yeah, you know, just they just took um, new players from the camp and, you know, that sort of thing. I think that kind of puts um, a shadow on what this team is actually built like at the moment. And yes, Mr. Araneta was correct that um, what was missing was um, somebody with the experience and the know-how that uh, Coach Allen has, which to be fair, we've never had a coach like that in our system in the Philippines. And I'm not just talking about women's football. And I, I know you both agree with me because look at this guy's CV, right? And um, if we want um, our, our systems, our teams to, to level up, uh, obviously that's, that's one of the keys. And this guy was it for the women's national team. And, uh, you know, great selection. I hope he stays, obviously, because I saw some articles earlier about, you know, we he's always staying until the, the end of the Asian Cup. And, oh, no, Mr. Aneta, I think, said we, we want to keep him no matter what the cost or something like that. I, I'm not sure about the word wow. cost. But yeah, no matter what. I think it's no matter what. But don't quote me on that. But, yeah. you know, he, they said it in some form <laughs> earlier at the PSA forum. In in JMA Sports, uh, there's hashtag trending, or at least wanting to be trending. It's a uh, in stage we trust because that's from uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> because because you just look at how um, he is managing. He is you know just having his players rotated uh, before each game. And and I had a quick story about about Stajic and, and his his tactics. Before the Australia game, I was chatting with uh, Coach Graham McKinnon of Global. 
he's an Australian, of course. And before the Australia game, he was there's a friendly banter going on, you know, we're gonna beat you today, Mr. Graham, something like that. And of course, him being part of the Philippine uh setup for a long time as well, he 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 was saying, Okay, this is how it is gonna be. Australia's strong, but you guys, because you have Stajic, you're you have a more than a decent shout at it. And when the starting eleven came and I said, Coach Graham, is this the starting eleven that we really want to? Because against Thailand, we have the captain, right? Tane. She was starting against Thailand. She did well. And against, you know, the biggest opposition and biggest, strongest team in the group, you bench your captain. He's on, she's on, he was, she was on the bench. And of course, I think Olivia, who did also pretty well against Thailand, she was also on the bench against Australia. So I was thinking, this can't be right. What's the coach thinking? Right? So Apparently, there was a long-term plan. There was a, uh, a decision made that, all right, Australia game, we're probably not, not going to win this, and we don't need to because we need Tane, we need uh, Olivia at their best physical form against Indonesia. So that's what happened. Um, they, they stayed fresh in Indonesia. They, 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 were, they were strong. And the same thing happened again. Against Chinese Taipei, you've got the player of the match against, against Indonesia who bossed the midfield, scored two ridiculously good goals, she started on the bench again, Tane. So, you know, again, but in this time, in this moment in time, all right, we trusted you, and we're going to trust you to do the right decisions. And lo and behold, Tane came in in the 72nd minute, and and the game went to extra time as well. So, you know, there, there was a thinking, there was a reasoning behind all of these things. And I think it goes to show the experience that, Coach Allen has one thing about the ice cream story, and I'd like to also to add to that because the 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 it was really you can see the rapport and the mutual respect I would say between the coach and the players because when Haley Long in one of the um, press conferences was asked, so Haley, um, what was the impact on you by the Coach Allen? And Coach Allen was right beside her. Coach Allen just said, you know, Haley, you can't lie right now, right? So, I mean, you know, all these things, you can see just behind the surface, beneath the surface, just how much um, both players and coaches trust each other and have this sort of mutual respect, which translates, of course, directly on the pitch. Because if you want to play for your coach, if you're going to run through a brick wall for your coach, it just, just improves your level of performance just that bit higher. I think Natasha would agree. Yeah, you know, um, I also really just want to add on as we talk about Coach Allen and just what he has done for this national team. As we said, he came in already with the experience, the caliber, and the know-how. But one of the things also that I think I heard from Ina's interview early on with um, was that the habit that he also instilled with the, with the team. You know, that winning habit, that winning in the moment. And you could see it in literally how he is off the pitch, as we said, when he how he is in his press conference. He's very gracious, he's very humble. How highly the players speak about him. How it has translated in the games as well. How well he can rotate his squad, his belief in his whole squad. So he has a deep bench, deep squad, and he uses them. He knows who to play what. He can his his vision is long term. He doesn't do it game by game. He has a long term plan. And so far, as he said, instead we trust because everything has been working out. His tactics have been fantastic. The way that he rotates the squad has been impressive. And at the same time, the way that he's able to get the most from his players. You know, that's also one thing that you really have to give it to this coach is that he is able to maximize the potential of the players that he has in his. And not a lot of coaches can be able to do that. And so for that mutual respect between players and coach, and the, every time you hear any interviews that any of them have, there's a lot of words thrown around about trust, faith, belief. And it's also because of the culture and the energy that they have in this camp within these players and the coaching staff around them. And all of that, as we said, all these things on, on the outside have translated to goals, to the score, and to a ticket to the World Cup. So it's just kudos to Coach Allen. And the number one priority will really be how we can convince him to stay. Because he is hot property right now. He is hot property. You know, 
everyone's going to be coming out after him and wanting to, to have him, especially because of what he has done for the Philippines. In what, and three months? Is it? In three months, exactly. So the goal really is, is that we need to find a way, even from us outside people, outside noise, to make him know that he is loved, he is appreciated, and we want him to stay on and to take the Philippines to the next level. He can certainly do that. And you are right, he's hot property right now. I'm sure the Australians might be thinking, what have we what have we missed here? What what happened here? Um, 